Hello and welcome to another month of the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, as always, DTC makes this possible and we do appreciate that. Uh, your host today is Carolyn Motley, and I'm with I'm the coordinator for the chamber, and Keith Reedy, who is uh, on the chamber board, and he is also works for the Courier. Uh, you know, this is Valentine's month, and we hope you shop locally for that little special someone in your life. Um, Woodbury has an abundance of stores where you can find something for a valentine. We have flower stores, we have boutiques, we have antique stores, we have a jewelry store, flower shops, tea cakes, makes great cakes and cupcakes and cookies, as well as food. And a gift card to one of the restaurants would be a really nice gift. And we have several restaurants that serve great food. The Short Mountain Distillery is having a special Valentine's dinner on the 13th of February, and you do have to call for a reservation, and I believe their serving times will be four until nine, and that's on the 13th. So if you wanna have a really special three-course meal, and I believe they have some entertainment too, uh, you might wanna call and check it out. Do we know what's on the menu? There was three different things. Oh, okay. And you could have your choice. I don't know if it was like hot dogs or hamburgers. No, 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 steak. not at the distillery. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I can't read them off to you right now because I can't remember them, but it was not hot dogs, I can guarantee you. wouldn't be reading them if you, if you didn't have the list. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, if you wanted to take her somewhere special, uh, that would probably be it. Hey, we've got you covered. Now you can come here and find something. And of course, if you shop local, you're, you're helping your local economy. So what could be a better thing than that? Right now, um, it's been a rough year. So they would appreciate your business, I'm sure. We do have guests today, and one of them is Christian Jones, and she is with the UT Extension Office. And Christian, what do you got for us today? Well, um, I have a few things from my coworkers. So at the Extension Office, we have programs going on in agriculture, uh, 4-H, and family and consumer sciences. So Bruce has sent me some interesting things going on with agriculture. Uh, as far as some trainings that he's got going on, um, Dicamba training, which is the herbicide, they have a certification um, program there, and they have some options as far as how to do the classes this year. Of course, we've got a lot of virtual things going on, so that's an option now. You can do um, your certification virtually. Um, you just need to sign up through UT Extension, um, and I will provide our phone number at the end of the, these uh, classes but so virtually and there's also some in-person classes that are going to be offered as well they we have a meeting room downstairs at the UT Extension office um, in Woodbury and so he is going to have some small group meetings there um, and those are let's see he's got times here scheduled for um, you can choose between 10 a.m. 1 p.m. or 6 p.m on the meeting dates that he has set. So these are February 24th, the 25th, and March the 1st. Um, and that's to get certified for? For the Dicamba. Okay. Purposeide. So um, there's another option if that, if those dates don't work, um, partnering with Warren County. He works a lot closely with Warren County's um, extension office and they will be hosting a group together March 4th and then March 11th at 6 p.m. So um, we know that everyone schedules very greatly and try to offer classes throughout the day that would um, offer that for different times that we have available. But the virtual is an option for sure if you can't make any of those times. Um, so just contact Bruce to sign up for that. The cost for that is $25 for the um, Dicamba certification. Um, and then now, also, is that just for one 
Um, uh, one item of, um, I know you have to be certified if you spray for certain right. weeds and everything. Because yes. I took that class one time, and I'm trying to remember why I took it. I don't ever spray for weeds, but my husband must have. There, the, the dicamba, this one's specifically for the dicamba herbicide. He also has a, a paraquat one also. Let's okay. see, what, let's see. That one, that sounds they have like new a regulations on that. Um, and so they mandate that any of those products that are distributed uh, are required to be in a closed system now, and they don't allow jar testing is I guess how they used to do it. But um, so they do offer that as well with the extension office. Um, something else that's new, uh, speaking about going more virtual, the Tennessee Master Row Crop Producer, they have that going on. The cost for that one is $100. And you enroll through the extension office. Um, that's a, a program where they kind of keep up with their points. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do different things to get different points for that. So there's a virtual library that they've started, which is new, and I went on that website this morning and looked at it. Um, it's really neat, you can watch the videos, you can take little quizzes online, um, and so they have all the training videos on in one central location on the website. So it's a um, virtual library is what they call it. Uh, it's just masterrowcrop.tennessee.edu and you can look for the virtual library on there. Um, some of the videos that I looked at were like identifying corn diseases, um, cotton disease management, they had different what, what to look for um, with diseases in your crops and things. So that is um, real educational and those are available online. Um, also the conference, they. Rick just did a virtual grain conference. Um, usually this is a big event that we do in person every year. Uh, it was held virtually this year, and it had over 400 participants, Bruce said, that were online um, and watched this. And those are recorded and available on the website also. And those, and that's one of the events that you can get points for for this um, row crop producer right. program. So um, that's what's going on with the agriculture side of it, 4-H, uh, we want to advertise camp. This year we were not able to do camps last year, um, but this year they are planning on it. They're doing a, they're capping it, I believe they're doing half um, capacity. Half capacity. And, um, but we are advertising for the 4-H camp in person this year. And let's see, we've got two different camps going on. So fourth, fifth and sixth graders are invited to come to the junior camp that is at the Clyde in the York H Center, the dates of June 21st through 25th. Um, the cost for that camp is $330. We do have scholarships available at the Extension Office. A lot of people don't know about the scholarships. Um, they can contact us and fill out a form, and then those uh, applicants get reviewed and um, some of the funds that we have allotted for scholarships either get spread out amongst applicants or there's different ways that we can do that. So, How can you, um, how long is this camp? How many days? Um, it is five days in June. Okay. June 21st through the 25th. And do they provide their own transportation to this campsite or do they still take a bus? They still take a bus. Um, let's see, that, that cost says it includes the transportation, food, and the stay. Um, so everything's included in that cost. And you don't have to pay it all at once. Also, uh, we can set up payment plans for that. Um, but it will be half capacity this year, so it um, means that most likely we'll fill up pretty quick, I would think. Uh, we have flyers that have what to bring to camp if you just want more information. Um, of course, you can call the Extension Office for more information on 4-H right. camp, but that's something that's been going on for decades I and know. decades. My so, kids all went to yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, they also offer a junior high camp, so this is one for 7th and 8th graders that's just more um, focused on that middle school age, and that the um, theme for that this year is Passport to the World. And that is um, held at the same location, just different dates. So the junior high 
adventure camp is what they call it. It's from May 31st to June 4th this year. Okay. Um, but Passport to the World, uh, they get to do more hands-on things, I think, with that. Um, they can go out and visit. One of the trips that they take is the Knoxville Zoo. Uh, that's an option. Um, they can do the Fall Creek Falls. There's a, let's say, canopy challenge course. That sounds adventurous. They could go kayaking. There's several different options for that. Those age groups, um, they can choose and rank which of these activities they'd like to do. But um, we can get those applications sent in. Just give us a call at the Extension Office. Now this is located, what, Crossville? Is that where the yes. camp is located? Yeah, it's the Clyde M. York Center in Crossville. Um, the cost for that junior high camp is 350. Um, I believe there are also scholarships available for that one as well. So just any questions um, or more information, give us a call for 4-H camp or some certification trainings for those herbicide classes, Master Row Crop, uh, but the number for Extension office to reach us there, 615-563-2554. All right. Well, very good. Well, I'm glad the camps are going on. Me too. You know, I'm glad to get it back, kind of back to normal, start to. I hope it continues <laughs> <Hopefully>. this way. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Kristen, for coming in, and um, we'll have you back again. But everybody, if you're interested in your kids going to camp, if you'll call them, They'll give you all the details, or I see you have some flyers there yes. that they can send out to you. We'll have more information on it. Yep. So, and where is the UT Extension office located in Woodbury? That, it's on Lehman Street, um, 614 Lehman Street. It's just across from the Senior Center. Right. So they'll know in case they want to come. Well, is your office open? It is. It is, okay. Yes. We're rotating. We have about one, at least one person in the office each day to um, keep the office hours. So we're there to answer the phones um, or to see if you want to stop by, if you want to call uh, to make an appointment, especially if it's Bruce with the agriculture things. Um, a lot of times it's a good idea to call call ahead to speak to him. Yeah. Okay. Those classes. But well, thank, thank you, you for coming. Sure. I remember when my kids all went to 4-H camp. And they yep. did everything I told them not to do. That's what, that's what you're supposed to do at 4 camp, right? I guess it is. That's why you go. <laughs> but anyway, they did enjoy it. And I know my youngest one, when they came back, I picked him and some of his friends up that went with him. And they told me, he, one of them told me, Danny almost made camper of the week. <laughs> and I says, what do you mean, almost? And he says, well, this boy messed up his bed, <laughs> messed up Danny's bed. <laughs> and I guess Danny took him out. But anyway, <laughs> it kept him from getting camper of the week. So there you go. He got honorable mention. No, I don't week. even think he got honorable mention. I really don't. Okay, we have another guest today, and Sue wears a lot of different hats. Sue has a CPA office here in town. She does taxes. She is also with the Lions Club. She's a treasurer for the Lions Club and also on their board. And, of course, that keeps a lot of people busy. And that's a job where you, for the betterment of your community, you donate your time. Right, Sue? That's right, yes. <laughs> we, that's our motto is we serve and we try to serve the community and we do that in many ways. We have a new project right now which is helping the needy with food. We have installed blessing boxes and it's a small pantry outside the Lions Club building and we keep non-perishable foods in there and anyone that needs anything can just stop by and get it out. If they uh, uh, want to leave something, they can stop and put it in. It's been quite successful. We feel like we've got some homeless people or some children that are using it some because we have got to having uh, snap top items so they can just eat it when they take it out. Gasway has one of these, and we've been over to see theirs, and theirs works well for them, and uh, 
So that's a new project of ours. And then we have just installed one at the uh, Short Mountain Distillery uh, with Billy Kaufman. He has put it over by the barn. And uh, what you do is you agree uh, to keep it stocked. And so the Lions Club is keeping the one in town stocked and Billy's going to help with the one uh, up at the distillery. And it's just, uh, and then the community, the whole idea is to get the community involved where they will stop and put a can or two in or, or if someone needs something right away, they can tell them to go there and get it. So it's been a good, uh, We've had good response at Woodbeer, and we've just started at Short Mountain. And like I say, Gasway has one, and we would like to, uh, once we get it going well, to have one in all the communities, if, you know, if we can find somebody I, who will keep it stocked. I'm surprised that churches haven't jumped all over this. Well, I think some of the churches have said they wouldn't mind having one, but a lot of them already have food pantries. They have food trucks, inside. too. So we felt like that maybe we needed to have it maybe somewhere else, like yeah. a fire station or something, if we could get the firemen to help us keep them stocked. That's been the big thing at Woodbury. We haven't had much community response as far as people adding, uh, bringing items. So, and, and the Lions Club has mainly been having to keep it stocked. And so that's another project we have for the needy. And, you know, in the, at Christmas, well, we have uh, people that go to the dollar store and take up food for the food bank. So we, that was quite successful this year. We uh, had a lot of food that helped the food bank. We also have a, a coat. We had two weekends where we gave away free coats and our coats for Canon. Uh, and we, uh, we're we helping with the uh, Drug Abuse Prevention Coalition. We uh, give them some funds to help them, and some of our members are involved with that. And then uh, the We Care Cannon, we try to donate to them to help them. And our, our big thing is site where we, uh, you know, buy eyeglasses or uh, and we go to the schools and do the eye screenings and daycares and do eye screenings and then we refer them to Vanderbilt where Lions Club will pay for their surgeries and things like that. Or, and know, there's been several people, children from Cannon County, that they have uh, benefited from that. Yes, there is. And then we also do some hearing aids and uh, that kind of thing. That's not as used as often as the eyeglasses are, but we have applications. You have to qualify, you know, and be needy for that, but, but that's something we do. So those are just some of the ways we serve here in the county, uh, you know, and there's lots of other ways we do too. We, we have the white cane is our big thing we do for sight and hearing, and we take up, stand on the street and take up money for that. and. Uh, that money goes to provide eyeglasses or Excuse whatever me. for the needy. And they have uh, added to the white cane uh, support for pediatric cancer now. So that's something new that's been added to the white cane. Uh, I think we're in coordination with Centennial and we're helping with that. Well, the father-daughter dance that we usually have that money goes to juvenile diabetes research. So Right, so that's another thing we do. And we hope, we don't know if we'll get to have that. No, yet. we didn't get to have it last year, yeah. and we'll have to see what happens this year. Yeah, we are planning our horse show, which is always the first Saturday night in July, and we're beginning to make plans for that. So we're, unless there's a bad, bad COVID outbreak, I think we will be counting on that again. Uh, there's just, you know, we hadn't been able to meet and we hadn't been able to do a lot of things that we have done. So it's just like everything else, we kind of had to fall back on some of our fundraisers and our uh, helping others. We keep the walking track at the uh, Dillon Park. We help maintain that and have paid for most of that. So. 
there's just a lot of things that we do to try to make our community a better place, you know. And that's what we want to do, is try to make our community a better place and people want to live here. And, and if anyone wanted to be a member of the Alliance Club, they could contact one of the members and they come to one of our meetings and see if they think it's a fit and then they can join the Lions Club if, if it is. They have to, they're approved by a membership committee and then they become a Lions member. So, uh, and a lot of people that have moved here, that's something they wanna do. They wanna help the community. It's their civic duty, they feel like. So we feel like we do a lot, and uh, we want to continue to do more. I think the Blazing Box would be, it's, it's our newest little project. So uh, we sponsor a peace essay and a, uh, a peace poster and a drug essay contest, and we awarded the winners to that, but COVID had cut back on that also. So Where your schools have... Yeah, had to change their routines session, also. So that has cut back on that. And so we we think we do a lot of good, and we try to have a little fun. So. Well, you also sponsor the Red Cross. Yes, that's that comes done every out other month on the third Thursday. We do the blood mobile, so that helps our community. And we usually meet or exceed our quota on that, so we do well with that. Uh, the other event that um, is one of the favorite is the first Saturday of every December. They have the pancakes with Santa. Um, then they parade, the Christmas parade, which is a large parade. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun doing that, and, and we enjoy doing that. And uh, this year we weren't able to have our lines to our homes which is usually also on that day, but we weren't able to do that this year, but hopefully things will get better and we'll be able to do that again. So. Uh, we have other events, don't we, Sue? Is that all of them? Well, we, of course, we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, we. Seems course, like we work harder than that. We have something all the time. We sell ornaments this year. Oh, that's the right, water we did. Tower for the old water tower as an ornament. We, we sold out of those. And uh, that was our 12th ornament. We'll be having a new ornament again this year. And we want people to realize we do more than stand in the road or sell something, that we are using that money at home. I was gonna say, the money that they raise from those items goes to a good cause. You know, uh, white cane, that goes to blindness. Um, juvenile diabetes, uh, the hospitals, they do things for, is it Vanderbilt that they do for the children's hospital yeah, down the there? Yeah, surgery and yeah. stuff. With the so, school for the blind is a big thing that yeah. we support. And uh, we uh, uh, like to go down there for the Christmas program. We weren't able to do that this year, but we The support. veterans. Yeah. Uh, they help with that every year, the Veterans Carnival and everything. Yeah, and we have a veterans uh, at the VA. We take, go down and have a, a veterans uh, day at the VA and we give them gifts and that sort of thing. And, uh, and then like I say, we work for the food bank as well because that in conjunction with uh, the dollar market, which the dollar, uh, yeah, the dollar market, they've been great because they collect food even before that. We do that usually the month starting in November mm -hmm. up until the middle of December. And people are so willing to give to Oh, that they are. That's the easiest they don't know how to give to the food bank or don't maybe know where the food bank is. Is yes, they it don't. It's in the Adams Office bill, building. Uh, here in town, and it's open from 10 to 12, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so that's a way that we, uh, people are helped in the community, but we collect all that food and it's given to the food bank. So I think people, uh, especially at Christmas, maybe they think more Thanksgiving about it. Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah. they do. Yeah, so we have, a, we have a good time doing that too. 
to and agree that's, of us will stand at the dollar store and take the king goods. Yes. That's the easiest fundraising I've ever done because you don't really have to say anything. They see your sign, uh, they know what it is, they go in, they may not say anything to you going in, but then they always come out with something. Yeah, they will. And the, and then the cashiers at the dollar store they say, always want to give to the yep. Kenny County Food Bank and, and add a couple of dollars and give a couple of yeah, items. It's worked helps. really well. It really has. I had a man this year, he came up to me and he said, He'd come out with his groceries, and he said, I didn't know it was for the food bank, or I would have got some stuff. I said, well, here, leave your groceries here, and I'll watch them, and you go back and get some stuff. And yeah, he, give us your groceries. Yeah, give us your groceries. That's what Stu did. No, I just dumped, watched she just his groceries. Box, right? And he went back in and purchased some items for the food bank. <laughs> they and need so, to. Well, give me the groceries you got. Yeah, here, I'll just take these. Yeah, we'll take the groceries, and you just go on your way. Go back in the dollar. General Market and get what you thought you were getting. No, Got they were. Food bank and take that home with you. I remember <laughs> one time I was working on this. Um, uh, this guy came up and he was riding a bicycle, and I thought, okay, he's just going to pick up one or two things, you know, because you're on a bicycle. Good heavens, he came out with two bags of stuff and gave us. Yeah. I never underestimate guys anything. on bicycles. My neighbor's got a bicycle, and he likes to ride it everywhere. He actually doesn't drive a car. It's his buddy does. He drives him everywhere. But I remember, you know, bumping into him at Kroger's one day, and this guy bought, like, he had, like, about six bags. And where in the world are you going to do that? But the worst thing about it was he bought himself, like, a 20-pound bag of cat food because they got, like, about 12 cats, you know, next door. Mm -hmm. Constant 20-pound bag of cat food. And I'm like... How's he going to get that on his bike? <laughs> well, he had two saddlebags, and in the saddlebags were these big containers, and he dumps the cat food into these two big containers on well, the saddlebags. Got to feed the cats, right Keith. Now that's all there is to it. Don't <laughs> underestimate. Do it. You never know. But of yeah. course, he's been seasoned. He's a veteran. Been probably riding his bike for 20 plus years. So, so he got knew it all it. figured out. He knew how to do that, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> And then buy them a, boat, a month load of groceries, too, well, at the same time. Well, this is your busy season, isn't it? It is. Yeah, we're geared up for taxes. have already started. We have a couple of new things this year. Uh, one is you can have a uh, above-the-line deduction for charitable contribution of $300. If you tell us that you gave that to a 501c or a church or something, that's new and we get to take that deduction uh, this year. And then also, uh, you may not have gotten your stimulus payment. And now the way to get it is to file a tax return and uh, then it will be sent to you like a refund if you have not received either the 600 or the 1200 or both, then you can receive it like a tax refund. So, uh, that's good for people to know there may be elderly people who have not had to file taxes in the past right. years. And there was a website that you could go in there and sign up for and get it, but now they want you to file a tax return to be able to get it and should be able to get your stimulus money. I think that'll help a lot of people, you know. I didn't know what, ha I knew there were people who didn't have to file taxes and I wondered how they, knew who they were. Yeah, they didn't get it, uh, yeah. I don't believe, unless they went on to the website and filled out a form saying, you know, I, you know, I didn't have to file taxes and give, either give their banking information or whatever. You know, I did do that for you know, some people. <laughs> you know, Sue, the thing about that is there are still people out there, and a lot of them are elderly, that do not have computers. Right. And they don't use them. And, and most things now, it's like everybody's got one or they've got an I know, iPhone. they assume that they, they do. They assume, and there's so many people that don't have don't access, have uh -uh. you know, to uh -uh. one or never use one, and older people maybe, and uh, they need a little bit of help, so. And a lot of those people that, uh, they did a report, I forget where it was, national website, a lot of those people went to the, like the local library, the local senior center, 
Mm -hmm. to get there. Well, now the senior they center will help you, know, you with this. Right. So that's been right. bad That's too, been true, too. You know. They are now, but, but they, they haven't been. Is the senior center open now? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, great. It's not, it's, uh, they're kind of limited as the things that they do. It's not full force like it was, but I mean, you can go in. Mm -hmm. You have to be checked, of course, at the door and mm -hmm. well, that's good. wear a mask and everything. That, so, but their exercise room is open, but you use it um, by reservation. You have to call and say, you know, I need, I, what time can I have? I think it's in half hour increments or something like that, so. Mm -hmm. What Let's is the ahead. advantage of doing taxes, preparing taxes through a service like you, rather than doing them yourself? Well, sometimes you just, you don't really know enough to do them. <laughs> but now if you have a simple return with a W-2 or something like that, that's fine. But we have people call us all the time and they say, I did this on the computer, and I did this, and that wasn't right. Or maybe somebody, a W-2 employee will say, well, I put in mileage and took mileage. And I say, well, no, you can't do that. A W-2 employee, you know, it's not eligible for a mileage deduction. So uh, I, I think the thing is we're aware of the changes in the law. We're aware of the new laws. and. Uh, and upcoming things that we can recommend to you that might help you. And if you're a business or something, you know, we can show you some ways that you might can reduce your taxes. So uh, a very simple one, yeah, I think it's fine, but a lot of people need some help with it. You and know? especially if you don't keep up with the changes. Yeah, that's a big Because yeah, there's new changes, changes every year. Right. Mm -hmm. that, and uh, we, like as a CPA, I have to have 40 hours of continuing education each year. And uh, so, you know, it's something I'm required to keep up on. Right. Uh, changes in not only tax laws, but other laws. So it's just something that we are required to do, maybe have more stringent I, I don't know if you just a tax preparer, I don't think you have to have any continuing education. But, you know, of course, we went to school, got an accounting degree, and then passed the CPA exam. So uh, we've had a lot of training in other areas, you know, where right. it's planning for your business or, or whatever. You know, we've, we can help you in a lot of ways. And I'm also a broker dealer where which means that I can help with retirement plans or buying stocks or mutual funds. So gotcha. that was another certification I got as a financial advisor with yeah. Avantex. Good deal. You know, I, I had a status message on my Facebook the other day saying that I uh, prepared my own taxes. Mm -hmm. I'm expected to go to jail by uh, Thursday. Oh no. It's a joke. Oh it's a joke. <laughs> okay. I thought he must have done something. Why well, I was say you lied big time. There you go, lied big time. I said that's what it's supposed to be. The joke was really I bad. lied on my taxes. I'm going to jail Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't, yeah. Who would no. like to have to go to jail? But they sure penalize you. They would. They would. <laughs> well, and then that's another thing. You may take your taxes to someone, but, like, you're going to put down what people tell you. Right. I, so I if they tell you wrong, letter that says <laughs> I prepare the return based on the info, information you provide me, and I most of the time I've got to have some documentation for what mm -hmm. that is, you know, and I keep that in my file. So yeah, I just don't make up figures and put on there. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> she don't want you to either. <laughs> No, I don't want you to either. And it's amazing how many people, because I used to be in the staffing industry, amazing how many people that just get the W-2 and they really don't know how to prepare their own taxes or they've done it before. I had people that were trying to uh, uh, claim the child tax credit mm -hmm. and they tried to... And you know, they when they had, well, when they, when they filled out their applications and did their W-2s or W-4s, or W9, well, I9s, I guess, whatever it was, they tried to claim it then. Mm -hmm. And you ask them, do you have any kids? And of course, you can't really consult them on what they should do 
but uh, as to how to fill them out. But at the end of the year, when they come back to you going, man, I went up the road and this person's charging me this much to try to do my taxes. I don't even know how to do my taxes. And we'd work it out together, you know, and I'd be like, well, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And because you claim that child tax credit and uh -uh, you weren't supposed to. Yeah, the earned income credit Inter yeah, has got income. where we yeah. have to ask so many questions, you know, and right. uh, sometimes uh, in a divorced family, both people will try to claim that, right. you know, and then they hold up both their refunds and it takes months to get that resolved, you know, when that happens. That's like that commercial, I always get tickled that that grown adult comes home to his folks and they're talking about something and he says, well, I'm going to eat, and the dad says, does that mean if I have a grown son that eats here, I can claim him on my Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that one, too, yeah. <laughs> so, no, that doesn't work. If you go over and eat it, moms and dads, they can't claim you. No, they can't claim you. All right, Sue, anything else you need no, to tell me? that's all I've got. Thank you. Well, that was a lot. All right, thanks so much. <laughs> well, good luck. All right. And we'll see you at Lions Club. All right. Okay, Keith, you got anything real quick? Well, we're doing sports. You've got um, high school basketball and playing their final game on Thursday as far as regular season, and we head to tournament time. And that's, uh, you know, the, the schools are the sports programs. You know, they've all been grateful that they've been able to get a complete They have gotten season. able to play more than I ever Nobody thought ever they thought would. that they would be able to get, get the complete season yeah. in. Now it's on to tournament time, and tournaments are looking like they're going to go without, you know, any type of hitch or glitch or anything. So we'll see. Well, next year we'll be in a new district. Yes. Yes, and, and I'm glad excited about that. Yeah, yeah. The only one is what is the longest from Westmoreland. Westmoreland. We'll have but to go to Westmoreland. I think people are more happy to go to Westmoreland than they are to have to go to York and live in Upper. Especially after what happened this past trip to York. But, uh, <laughs> well, okay. We're not going to go there. <laughs> All right. I have another guest, and I see this lady almost every day. Yep. I have. <laughs> That's why she was so easy to book. <laughs> That's right. You know, she I came in all. today I and I yes says, you want to go <laughs> on? Yeah. I've got Beth with me and she is the director of the um, Art Center in Cannon County. And she is also on the Chamber of Commerce board. And you've had a rough year, haven't you, Beth? We sure have. A rough 2020 and 2021 is not looking good either. <laughs> it's just not settled down yet, has it? Not no, it completely. Hasn't. We don't know when we will start back up with events yet. I know. It may be summer, the way it's looking. Uh, the only thing we have on our books now is we're having a virtual fundraiser on the 23rd of this month, 23rd of February, and it's we're going to have an auction going on. Several artists have donated pieces, so those will be some will be throughout the show, which will be like about an hour, an hour and a half long. And then some will go for 24 hours. So right. we'll have two different types of auctions going on. We have taped a lot of artists from the past three or four years that have come back and done a song from a show. They're really good. I've watched all of them. They're really good. There are about 11 of them. So those will be on. We'll have some little clips from some old shows that are going on. And uh, Matt and Mary Ellen Smith are going to host it. Okay, good. And they're a lot of fun. And they've been yeah, a lot they of are. shows here, so they'll be familiar faces to people. Okay, and you will have, one thing that I did want to uh, mention was the Art Center is open. Yes, we are. It's open. open from 10 till 2, Tuesday through Saturday, right? Yes, and our gift shop is open. We do have uh, some displays in the gallery. Um, so, I mean, come in, see what's going on. Well, that's another and way you... Cultures is open. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's another way that you can buy your Valentine something yes. because there's some really unique and pretty things in the gift shop at the Art Center. All, yes, and unique artists, they're all different. And there's a lot of special items in there. 
good gifts. Yeah, they and are. There's some reasonable items in there also. There are. I mean, there really are. <laughs> there are. All, it's not. There's not <laughs> that much very high in there. It's it's very reasonably priced. So. And um, this auction that you guys are having mm -hmm. this month, how do you view it? How do you? Facebook. It's It'll on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to be on your website, or. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we have things on our website. Something's coming out in the paper about it, and we have several posts. We'll have Mailchimp's going out about it. So it's a week from, two weeks from. The 23rd. Yesterday. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 20, it'll be at 7 o'clock. So that's and on a Monday, Monday night, 23rd? It's a Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. okay. Tuesday night. And like I said, it'll last an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how much talking's going on with Matt and Mary Ellen, you know. But, but you'll be able to bid through phone, texting, or on, you know, however, email. And I'll have also, I've got a program. I didn't get it. I did it myself. But a program where you can do it on our website. You can also oh. bid on there. So there'll be several ways to bid, and we'll be keeping track of it. And some of them will, like I said, end at the end of the show, and then some will go on for 24 hours. Okay, so that's, some of the bigger items will go on for 24 hours. That's great. But these are these artists. I mean, they'll tell about a little bit about each artist. A lot of them are in our gift shop. Most of them are White Oak artists from the White Oak Craft Fair that donated for this event. So. And then next yeah, door. It's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know you were having actual entertainment. Yes, so. there's actual entertainment. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> what well, these are you? actually video clips, you say, from past performances? We do have or? video clips from past performances, okay. but some of some these of are, are live performances gotcha. where they've come back and cool. the two girls from Annie, the two Annies, came yeah. back and did a song. And then there's pictures in the background rolling from that. Um, Matt and another person are doing the traveling song from Shrek, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're not in costume. They're just right. doing it. And it's, yeah. they're really good. They really are. That's worth tuning in for. It really is. And then, like she said, <clears throat> you've got Short Mountain Cultures. It's connected to the Art Center on the side. They have some unique organic type foods. Um, they do. More than that, they have certain specialty drinks. They have um, they have some of the best sugar-free candy I have ever tasted. <laughs> it is good. It is good. Well, they also have produce. They, they do. Have meats. They have vegan items. So they have a lot in there. But uh, they have goat cheese. They do have goat. They cheese. do. I thought they did. They do. A lot of people like goat they cheese. They have regular cheese too. That's local. Well, most of their stuff is from local. Right. Um, but a lot of fermentation like from local local artists. But, right. Um, yes. But yes, tune in on the 23rd at seven o'clock on Facebook because it's going to be it's going to be a like entertainment. Fun. It'll be a little show. <laughs> and that's the thing that we've missed at the art center is the shows yes. and the music. We want people to know um, we're still here. We're still in business, and our gift shop is open. So and they're still see. trying to book things. <laughs> we are. We're, we not, just yeah. don't know what's going to happen. You're just not going into that, are you? <laughs> I'm not. It seems like every time I, we try to set a date, and then all it doesn't sudden, happen, and then I have to refund. And it, I hate yeah. calling those people because it's yeah. so disheartening, you know? So now we're not setting any dates. We're just assuming. Well, you know, the summer. theater part of it is, um, even though they have it spaced out, the way the regulations say, you, you've got about half capacity a by the third. time you do that. Yeah, a third. Yeah. It's not that big, but it's also something. You know, it's like every event I think about, and I think oh, we want to have this, but then I always think, well, are you encouraging all of this, or are you helping to bring it down to where we can go back to some kind of normalcy? So. Well, it's a hard dis it's a it's hard to make that decision. It is, and in our case, you know, we have to pay royalties for these shows. Right. And royalties are very expensive. I mean, some of them cost us four or five thousand dollars. Some more, some less, but that's probably the average. And if you only have a third of capacity in there, you can't you make, your make your royalties. Money back, yeah. You right. know? So. See, I think <laughs> the people didn't realize that, Beth. When you have community theater. Yeah, we still have to pay for yeah, the show. Yeah, you do. And if we have a band, we have to pay the band. I mean, they're not they're not going to do it for free. Right. Um, so it just, it costs. There's a lot of cost to it. 
Bill and I know there's a lot of people that miss it. You know, I miss, I miss the it. concert. I'm oh, sure yeah. you do. Well, I mean, yeah, the concerts too. We miss those. Yeah. You know? And uh, a lot of them, even if we book somebody, most of them, well, some artists probably would still come, but they're rentals. They rent our space and then. Right. They, t they, they pay, yeah. set their own. They set their own fee. Fee but and everything. So. You know, they're not going to make the money. We're not big enough. When you put only a third in there, we're just not. Right. It's not enough. They got to pay expenses too, don't they? Yes, they do. They have to pay their own man. You know, it's too cold to do something outside. Oh. It well, it is right now. I froze we every did since. We have the event, you know, in the fall that was outside and yeah. with the stage and everything, but we can't do that in the winter. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the white oak. Uh, let's see. Did you have it last year? No, we canceled no, it last year. Planning to have it this year. And are you even, planning on it? You know, and even we're the concerts that are. are going on outside, you know, that we're going, even if it's cold, there are concerts around the, around that are going on outside, but they've had to cancel just because yes. of the COVID right. concern. You know, I think Stage Stagecoach Festival, March, they had to cancel. They said, no, we're not going to do it, even though that was a... March is a hard it. month. <laughs> Yeah. February is a hard month. You know, but. with all of the vaccines and everything, it's kind of like what I've said before. You know, what, what I'm hearing is kind of like what you've said in the summer is when things are going to start popping around. You know, sports, uh, they've already got the season tickets. They're already talking about season tickets being for sale. So they're starting to talk about, you know, reopening the stadiums and, mm -hmm. and uh, basketball arenas and stuff like that to crowds. Whereas they're playing now with no crowds right. or limited crowd, very, very limited mm -hmm. crowd. I guess the Super Bowl, they had a little bit of a crowd, but uh, 25,000, I think. If you look at uh, college basketball right now, there's nobody in those gyms, mm -hmm. you know, and they're playing full, full games, but uh, nobody in those gyms. And, that's, that's sad. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We both, I had two grandchildren, went to Maryville, and they played basketball. Uh, the first year, especially when they got up there. I was amazed because we came from a small place like Cannon County who had a packed gym every time we had a basketball game. You got up there and they would have a basketball game and there would be maybe 20 people yeah. mm -hmm. small. show up. Because it's a division, three school division, you know, support for sports, especially in this day and age with, you know, people not standing up for the national anthem and things. That's really taking a toll on people's attitudes towards sports. Mm -hmm. And it starts at the collegiate level. Well, I Even think though, what it was is they had a lot of kids that were from out of state. Yeah. And they didn't have family to family, come and everything. That, that, I mean, that we went and watched part. ours every chance we could, but... If they travel somewhere else, they travel to other states. Yeah. You know, not students, just other towns. <laughs> yeah, students of those, you know, smaller schools, they don't support their mm -hmm. programs. So I was I was surprised at that because I was expecting big crowds and I thought, where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> but the Super Bowl, the cardboard cutouts were unique, but probably not. I don't know. It's ju it just wasn't the same. Of course, the Super Bowl didn't go the way I wanted it to. Anyway. <laughs> but I kind of figured, you know, my, my, my idea on the Super Bowl and some of these people that the NFL experts say, Keith, don't say this, but, I, you know, ever since that one with Seattle, you know, when the guy had it down the one yard line and they decided to pass the ball, time running out and they throw the interception, <laughs> I think the Super Bowl's fixed. I mean, and, and to be honest with you, here's here's my theory about this year's Super Bowl. I tell number that one, to my husband every time mine loses. Number one, the Super Bowl was held where? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay was the only team in the NFL history that made it to the Super Bowl where they were the home team. So are you thinking the NFL is going to say, no, Tampa Bay, you can't win this game? No, that would be a trivia question. That would be on who wants to be a millionaire to blow it to Kansas. They weren't going to let that. No. But yeah. Okay, I, Keith. <laughs>
now every NFL fan has probably turned us off. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you said that. That's kind of like saying, telling our kids we don't believe in Santa Claus. Um, well, <laughs> no, I still believe in Santa Claus now. I do. Um, anything else you want to talk to us about, Beth? I don't think so. Can't think of anything. Okay, then I'm gonna go on with it. We do have some events. People are trying to have them this time. And uh, I don't know if it'll work out or not. We'll see, but February 19th and 20th, they have Winterfest and that's with the downtown merchants. And you can expect specials and discounts and I'm sure some of them will probably have some refreshments, but it'll be a lot of fun. You can go around to all the stores and of course, you're invited on the 20th, which is one of those days, to the grand opening of the Willow 210 uh, Vintage Market. And it is located at 210 Water Street, right behind the courthouse. And the ribbon cutting will be at 11 a.m. And this is Woodbury's newest stop for vintage and antiques. So the name is kind of deceiving because I've had people call me and ask me when the new market was going to open, but they were thinking it was a food market. <laughs> it's, it's not. They may have some food in there, but it's not. And anyway, for the grand opening, the route, they will have refreshments, and I'm sure there'll be a door prize in there somewhere, and you're invited. And she already has room on the top level for vendors, but I believe that she, at this time, last week, she told me she already had 26 vendors that were moving in. So that just fills the top floor because she will also, she has a basement floor that she will put vendors into. But um, be sure and stop by and welcome them to the community. We want to welcome many new business. I will tell you what, it's hard to um, realize that in this day and time and with the way it's been, that people are willing to open a new business. So, hey, if, they, if they're willing to do that, then we need to say, you go for it and we're gonna help. <laughs> because it's, that's unusual right now. Uh, February 23rd, the Art Center will be holding their virtual auction and entertainment, as I just found out. And you can always call the Art Center at 615-563-2787, and they'll be glad to answer any questions or go on their Facebook or website, because I'm sure it'll be on there too. Uh, February 27th, the Cannon County Walking Horse Association will hold their annual meeting at the Corners located at 2020 Pleasant View Road. They usually have a dinner for this meeting. There will not be a meal served at this one, but there will be an auction. So if you're interested in donating something, usually they like something that's horse related. Um, They'll be glad to take it because that's how they will make some of their kickoff funds from that. But that will be on the 27th. And then we have some new members to the chamber or some that have rejoined the chamber, one of them being Half Hill Farm and Wellness Emporium, and that is located at 110 West High Street in Woodbury. And then we have another antique store that's out of town, and that is Over the Hill Antiques, owned by Wanda and Gary Reed, and it's located at 1388 Bradeville Road. And of course, if you're going toward Murfreesboro, uh, you would turn left at the flashing light at Bradeville and just keep, it's probably about two miles down the road, Big antique store, that built, lots a big of space. Building. Well, it was a horse, horse. stable. Yeah, okay. No and it's, uh, yeah, and they've turned it into, and yes, it is heated, so don't worry about that. <laughs> if you wanna go, it's fun to go down there and go through it because as with all the antique stores, they have 
a little bit of everything down there. And I found some things that I never thought I would find, but I did find some down there. Um, February is also, our senior center has had a difficult year also because it is so active and does such a good job, but they've had to be closed most of this year. They are now open on a limited basis, but February is have a heart for seniors. And what that is, is if the community or the members would like to donate some money to the senior center, it keeps all those great programs that they have for the seniors going. And th I, there's never a dull moment up there when it's going full force. And they've had to limit a lot of that, but they provide a lot of good services for our senior sentence center, as well as health-related items, uh, their exercise room, which is open, but you have to call for a reservation to use it because it's all in one room, and so they don't want to um, they don't want to expose anybody unnecessarily. So, if you'd like to give to the senior, you can always call the senior citizen center at 615-563-5304, and um, they'll be glad to tell you how you can go up there and donate something. The chamber, I've had calls about this. We are planning to have the cruise-ins on the fourth Saturday of every month, and from 4 until 7 p.m. on the cruise-ins. Um, there's been some issues come up, and we may have to find another location for a couple of them. But we are also planning on having the full color of fall car show, and that will be September 25th. And that's all I have for you this month. And we thank you for watching, and we want you to stay safe, and happy Valentine's Day to you too, Keith. Oh, even to me. That's and to Ben. <laughs>